B.B. King loved to talk about Frank Sinatra. The iconic blues guitarist could speak eloquently about his art form, but he took tremendous pleasure in all kinds of music, and if you gave him half a chance he'd rhapsodize about O.L. Blue Eyes, Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan. Alvon Johnson, one of the Bay Area's most dynamic blues artists, brings a similarly Catholic sensibility to the bandstand. The guitarist and vocalist is as ready to talk about Tom Jones and Doris Day as guitar shorty and Lowell Folsom, the blues greats he cut his teeth with on the 1980s Los Angeles scene. Blues is one vehicle we use to express ourselves, Johnson says. But I think it's wonderful to turn on a dime and play whatever style you feel, if you can do it authentically. An old-school entertainer who embraces the showbiz imperative that the audience is always right, the Vallejo resident has earned a vaunted reputation over the past two decades, gigging widely at home and touring internationally. Johnson's wide-open approach can fit just about any setting, and with a series of high-profile gigs, including the Blue Note Napa on December 20, Biscuits and Blues on December 21, and a holiday show at Yoshi's on December 24, he's got several opportunities coming up to display his versatility. I'm somewhat of a chameleon, he says. I gear my material to the room. At a juke joint, I do juke joint material, and at a jazz club I'm playing songs that make sense there. A San Francisco native, Johnson didn't harbor musical ambitions as a teenager. He played bass and guitar in a college band, but he graduated from the University of Oregon with a degree in history, thinking he might go into teaching. When he got more serious about music, Johnson decided to make the move to Los Angeles in the early 1980s, where he ended up landing the guitar chair in the Drifters, the enduring but revolving door doo-wop combo. His career really took off when he joined the Coasters and ended up taking on vocal and lead guitar responsibilities with the storied band through the rest of the decade. At the same time, Johnson started to delve into LA's deep pool of blues talent, particularly searing Southwest guitarists like Guitar Shorty and Pee Wee Creighton. Watching how these master showmen could dominate a room, he learned that instrumental technique wasn't the only thing a musician could use to seize and hold an audience's attention. By the time he moved back to the Bay Area in 1990 to help care for his ailing parents, he was well-versed in what L.A. Blues artists called getting house. Los Angeles was the proving ground, Johnson says. When I went to L.A., I thought I was good. I got down there and everybody was great. It was a great place to learn because everybody was trying to outdo one another. You had to figure out what to do to stand out from people who'd been doing it for years. After several years off the circuit to take care of his parents, Johnson eased onto the Bay Area scene. By the mid-90s he was connecting with audiences abroad, starting with a long-running annual gig in Paris at the illustrious Maxwell Café. Powerhouse vocalist Terry Odeby first encountered Johnson at the East Oakland Dive Rumors around 2004 and was duly impressed, he'd rock the doors off the hinges, she says.